plate tectonics caused small developing continents to assemble into a single supercontinent called Nuna. As Nuna formed, its burgeoning landmass provided cyanobacteria with an expanding habitat in its lakes, rivers, wetlands, and estuaries. Cyanobacteria produces free oxygen through photosynthesis. At that time, however, most of the free oxygen produced was consumed in decomposing dead cyanobacteria, so very little free oxygen accumulated in the atmosphere. On land, however, dead cyanobacteria got buried under sediments. So oxygen that would have broken down their bodies instead ended up in the atmosphere. The presence of a large landmass helped increase the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. As the total land area on the surface of the Earth increased, so too did atmospheric oxygen levels, dramatically. Over time, the Nuna supercontinent broke up into smaller continents. But once again, plate tectonics reassembled a supercontinent, this one called Rodinia in equator region. Slabs of oceanic plates subducted under continental plates gradually accumulated in the mantle transition zone. Eventually, these slabs fell down into the core the slabs cooled the outer core, changing the flow of electricity within. As a result, the core's dipole magnetic field transformed into a weaker quadrupole magnetic field. The Milky Way galaxy collided with a dwarf galaxy and underwent a transition into starburst conditions. Over time, these newly produced stars ended in supernova explosions, bombarding the Earth with cosmic rays. The Earth, with its weak quadrupole magnetic field, was heavily affected. Clouds covered the entire Earth, and ice covered its surface. A series of supernova explosions occurred. Long periods of extreme heat were punctuated by shorter periods of extreme cold. In the extremely cold periods, oxygen in the atmosphere fell to Archean Eon levels, causing mass extinctions. These mass extinctions, however, created great opportunities for life to evolve into something completely new. Repeated influxes of cosmic rays and drastic fluctuations in oxygen levels. These environmental changes caused genetic mutations that accelerated the appearance of new species. The starburst period ended and the Earth's core reverted to a stronger dipole magnetic field. Ongoing photosynthesis returned the oxygen in the atmosphere to previous levels. Meanwhile, the inner Earth was gradually cooling down. When the inner Earth is hot enough, the components of water trapped in minerals in the oceanic plates are released to the surface environment, and the seawater level is unaffected. However, once the mantle temperature drops below 650 degrees Celsius, minerals carry these water components down into the upper mantle. Meanwhile, on the surface, deprived of the components of water, sea levels gradually decrease. This is known as the leaking earth phenomenon which is inevitable on a cooling planet. This leaking effect moved 3% of all seawater into the deeper mantle. Sea level dropped by 600 meters. 
As a result, surface land areas grew, as did continental shelf areas receiving sunlight. A habitat for future life on Earth was being created. Rivers carried nutrients from the inlands down to the continental shelves. And the additional landmass significantly accelerated the buildup of oxygen in the atmosphere. These processes set the stage for an explosive evolution of life forms.